Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Geek 2.0 Podcast. It's a special episode. It's been too long. <laughs> it is. I mean, I know we kind of, well, holidays and life got in the way yeah. to last month's episode. So we kind of like roll it in. We're going to, you know, fidget a little bit. <laughs> we'll fudge the numbers. <laughs> hey, we're only human. Yeah. So what we're going to do in this episode, we're going to take a look back at 2018. I know it's, we're, what, a month into, almost a month into uh, 2019. That's okay. And we can always look back. It's never too, <laughs> too late. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do this episode, is look back at a lot of the things that happened in the past year, in 2018. I mean, some of the good stuff, maybe some of the bad stuff, or some of the scary stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening to this, uh, the world is ended. And <laughs> so the, the scary stuff can be, you know situational depending on the person well, yeah i mean that's <laughs> if all of a sudden the twinkies were, can't be made i mean how many people in the population of the world was all, all of a sudden just riot a lot a lot yeah yeah or all, the phones went out <laughs> everyone <laughs> lizard people take over lizard you know people, I mean, these things happen yeah <laughs> so that's what we're going to do this episode um i think the first thing we'll, we'll jump on is actually let's go ahead and jump right into ai Okay. A lot of interesting developments with AI have happened in the past year. Yeah, it's definitely starting to come. Uh, I mean, it's it's always been progressing, which I actually think is surprising to some people. Uh, they were thinking it was more of a, a fad, if you will. Um, but it's definitely coming along quite well. And uh, the biggest thing I believe to be uh, in 2018 is it's starting to become more cloud hosted, cloud based, uh, which makes it very accessible to more end users and more people. Uh, this way you don't have to have a, a device that has AI built into it. You just need to have a device that can access the AI, which makes it very easy. It's like the internet. You don't have to have the internet stored on your phone, no, just a device that can access the internet. Well, now also, they made it where you're putting machine learning, which is, uh, which is a basic of AI, on your device. Because mm -hmm. it's actually, they the, what they say is that it makes what you do, it'll, uh, able to predict what you want before you even know what you're going to do. So, Facebook advertisements. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so you wanted to go to wherever that one place is. Well, here you go. Here's the ad, and we already booked a trip for you. Got your tickets. You're packed up pretty much because your house also is AI. All you got to do is just click this button. We swear it's safe. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> You're in our hands. But a lot of things, and earlier in the year, um, one of the things is uh, Google. They're in a Google I.O. They had their assistant, which was basically a... Uh, you have your your Google Assistant where you can look up stuff, and mm -hmm. you know we have all done that. Or uh, Siri with like, "Hey, where do I hide a body?" and she'll come back with <laughs> you know a witty remark. But this one is where it actually calls like a place of business or a restaurant to book a reservation or something that like you would have an actual assistant do exactly. But it's all AI based, and the nice thing is when the other person's picking up the phone, it doesn't sound like a robot. It sounds like an, you're, that person is talking to another person because they've included a bunch of like the uhs and okays and you no know, general real human. Stallers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, I mean, kind of like a almost uncanny valley past that point where you can't really decide is it I'm um, talking to a robot or an actual person. Mm -hmm. So that is at the beginning of the year where they – they, shown us to making a uh, restaurant reservation and the person had a thick accent and it was able to understand what she was saying enough to okay I'm making a reservation for four at eight o'clock and everything's all set up yeah well that's I mean that's one of the the biggest things and it's something we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later though but regarding you know accents and different mm -hmm. languages and stuff like that and it it needs to have that kind of capability yeah. to be able to understand that. I, I mean, this is going way back when, but I remember videos of, I think it was Siri, 
where they were dealing with your more thick, like Scottish accents, uh, or Irish. Accent. Yeah, <laughs> and they were, were like, "What? What they say?" <laughs> they were showing videos of them trying to use the phone, and it just would not understand what they were saying at all. Yeah, because a lot of it is a lot of failure. Because just like us, or like a newborn, it basically is a newborn. Yeah. It has to fail all this time before it's, okay, well, I understand that. I'm starting to understand. Okay, yeah, I can speak with you now. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where a lot of people don't give credit where credit is due. Yes, it might sound scary to some people, but it could actually help other people where if they don't have uh, verbal communication mm-hmm. they can actually just sit there hit a button and have a full conference um, Stephen Hawking mm-hmm. where he was able his the code that was in his software to, for him to actually speak or communicate with the outside world was made possible with a little bit of AI it was get it was definitely getting there or it helped it was, it was uh, predicting like words, and all he had to do was just pick letters. Yeah, just like the keyboard on your phone right now, they're tradic- the uh, that's predictive AI. text. Yeah, that's a little bit of a small feature of AI. Mm-hmm. Very small, but yes. So AI is everywhere. <laughs> it's definitely getting there. And then um, one of the things that was last year that they started doing was, um, uh, we were talking a little bit before the show about this, is actually rendering uh, pictures. Mm-hmm. Um you can give AI uh, a million pictures and tell it pick out the you know the red convertible. Yeah, it will go through and it will find the red convertible out of the million pictures. But you tell it, hey, make a picture of a red convertible on a beach. <laughs> it can't make it. Er, yes. er, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <At> first. <laughs> But it's it's starting to get to a point um, where now, like, for example, you can get a bunch of pictures of celebrities Mm -hmm. and it can mash those pictures together and make a completely unique person. That is actually to a normal uh, person's eye completely. I mean, you wouldn't tell it's fake or not. You will look at it and say, oh, that's a picture of uh, some star. I guess I don't know who that is. Yeah. But within 18 days of the AI and the computers is bashing and merging all these different things together in less than 20 days you get a picture that is comparable to like a real photo Mm -hmm. that is completely generated and it's no basis in reality whatsoever and then uh another thing that they were doing uh last year that came out is uh it's dueling neutral networks uh basically what they will do because the whole way that we as humans create things is it takes imagination. Mm-hmm. It takes a thought in your head that's not out there and for you to sit down and to actually create whatever was in your head. AI doesn't have that kind of creativity yet. No. Uh, so what they do is they take two AI and pit them against each other. And so we'll take the example, the red convertible on the beach. One AI will create what it believes to be a red convertible on a beach run it against the second AI. The second AI goes, no, that's not it. We'll try to bounce it back. It'll make its adjustments, bounce it back. And they just sit there and they go back and forth. And that's where the creativity in a sense comes from. And it will create a completely new, unique image Mm -hmm. based off of its own recognition and bouncing it between two AIs. Yeah. I was just looking at it because I I remember uh, you saying, with learning and between two AIs is the uh, um, AI deep mind with against the uh, world's top go player mm. and beating him but that was uh, like 2017 2016 but still it's something where like that it's learning but also learning from us yes because that's actually that's we model these AIs or software or anything like that off of what we can do or know how to do. Yeah, uh, DeepMind, uh, Google Brain, and NVIDIA are the mm-hmm. key players in it. Yeah, so, so basically we're we're pretty much um, trying to put a little bit of us in creating a new life form. It's, it's what what I find the the, the most uh, hilarious part about it though is that the. The solution that they're currently uh, that was created last year that they are running with 
uh, it started during an academic argument at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where, where else would you do it? <laughs> that means it's got a good, solid foundation. Yeah, we're not a bar napkin with a bunch of you know, whatever spilled on it. <laughs> And so it's pretty much, yeah, it's like anything like a sleazy bar. I'm not going to say a sleazy <laughs> I don't know where. It could have been like the nicest bar in who knows? Like Silicon Valley or whatnot. It's fun to think of it as a sleazy bar, though. Yeah, it's <laughs> like hole to wall the with a dirty floor. One, yeah. Bikers everywhere. <laughs> I love how sleazy bars have to have bikers. Bikers are some of the nicest people. I know, right? It's just like, I mean, it's just a stereotypical, like, oh, it's better not go in that place. <laughs> Look at all the bikers. <laughs> and they're probably you no know, <laughs> taking it back to uh, you know, Disney with uh, Tangled, <laughs> with the, uh, the Ugly Duckling bar. And it's oh, all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it could be the nicest people on earth. Mm-hmm. But it is. It's just that it's that trope. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a well-worn trope. <laughs> but the I I mean I guess the the biggest reason that we're excited about and looking at it is because AI really can open up the. I, that's the best way of putting it. I hate to say open up the world because that's just kind of stupid to be perfectly honest with you. But I mean, it, it's another it really, <laughs> Yeah, it really it opens up uh, a new realm of thinking about mm-hmm. things. Um, because while humans are very creative and very good at coming up with solutions to problems, mm-hmm. we also at the same time can very easily overlook problems because we're accustomed to it. Well, yeah, because we only look at how uh, our process is doing a certain way. Or, you know, it's like the old saying, uh, two heads are better than one. Mm -hmm. And so we got like a world stinkers, like, oh, millions of people think of one problem. That is an issue where you can have them still working on that issue, but add in AI that can look at billions of different ways of doing Mm -hmm. it. Within a relatively short amount of time, yeah, it can just absolutely process because its that processes information. are so yeah. much faster than that. Like, you put your hand on a on a hot stove; it's going to be like a nanosecond. Like, oh, <laughs> hot! Oh, lift up my hand. <laughs> yeah, but robotics is also could be also a part of that as well. With we've seen with Boston Dynamics mm-hmm. and their Atlas was way out there now, including with AI. We're thinking. I don't know if you saw it with the video where it, it, their uh, Atlas robot can do flips and do almost like parkour pretty much now. Uh, the, I've seen some of the, I've seen all kinds of robots that they have, and it's mm-hmm. it's definitely it's almost for scary. The people, yeah, for yeah. the people that are scared about it, it's not helping because they are just developing more and more. And it's just re- pretty much it's relatively quick how fast we see like when the Atlas robot. I mean, they're going pushing with a hockey stick, falling over on its face. And you're like, well, that's not nice. Because <laughs> now the up- robot uprising is going to go after that guy first. My favorite is when they take the videos from that and then they do the little doodle faces on top <laughs> like, of it and give them little, little personality. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything's better with doodles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, they have the... And then they have... Uh, I don't know when this came out. This could be old, but they had the two dog-like creatures I where the one ran, in, year, yeah. ran into the door, mm-hmm. called the other one that could open the door. Because it had the, uh, the, the, the claw. Yeah. yeah the, the claw. Yeah. So it opened the door and both of them went through. <laughs> it's like, okay, now they're communicating with each other. Yeah. <laughs> and they can add that into, well, they've already done that with self-driving cars. And we talked about this before, mm-hmm. where you can have your cars speaking to one another down the entire length of a highway. It was all AI. Well, and that was one of the things that was uh, brought up with the the uh, the two AIs battling each other and creating, as they were saying that that could be used with self driving cars to be able to not only predict mm-hmm. while it's on the road, but it could also train. Yeah. Uh, so it can take a new car. It can use that predictive imagination, if you will, of the two AIs battling each other and go, okay, well, a pedestrian comes here, a pedestrian comes here. Okay, I need to take this path, this path, and this path without actually getting on the road, mm-hmm. which is what they have to do now. They have to get on the road with someone in the car and go, okay, we're going to put a cardboard cutout of a person here. And a little Timmy there. Another yeah. one here, yeah. And we have to teach it, okay, when you hit this part, you do this, and then, you know. So it's, it's, 
possibly safer in that sense. Well, I can I can look at it and say, hey, it, it can actively scan the sidewalks or like say like New York City, <sighs> yeah, which is probably the worst possible place for driving. And with pedestrian traffic, I would say DC is probably very close behind it. Well, I don't really have any experience, or I've seen like videos and stuff on. I don't have like real world experience, but to look at pedestrian traffic and it can schedule. Okay, well, little, little lady here, she's not going to move as fast as the messenger that's running across the road. <laughs> you got this group of kids. Well, I know that most kids are dumb and they're going to stop <laughs> looking around when, oh, a teacher's up there or my parents are up there. <laughs> so it, it can, I can predict. Like that needs to be the slogan for this podcast. Kids are dumb. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's half the time parenting is basically having to not have your kid kill themselves every day. I like looking at it the way that Neil deGrasse Tyson looks at it. Kids are scientists. Okay. And they are going about the world with a scientific mind going, I wonder what would happen if I did blah. We look at it going, that is stupid because as you put earlier, that is a hot stove and you're mm-hmm. going to burn yourself. Yeah. The kid doesn't know it. They're, They're looking well. at it from a scientist, <laughs> scientific standpoint. I look, that looks like it's glowing red. I wonder what would happen if I touch it. Oh, okay. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's painful. It hurts. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... AI is... How we're moving about is actually very, really, very, 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 very fast. Mm-hmm. And where we've seen, like, maybe earlier this year, okay, this is something that we're talking about to now, middle, and later in the year where it's actually in... Almost our everyday lives it's in definitely. one way or another. Well, and it's only going to uh, it's only going to get expedited with it moving cloud based. Mm-hmm. With this past year and it moving cloud based, it's now going to become more ingrained in people's lives. Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of people already have your you know Alexas and your Google Homes and obviously your phones. Um, so that in a way is using again a small fraction of AI Mm -hmm. you tell it something and it's able to respond with what it needs but with it becoming cloud based and you now be able to have access to a full fledged running AI it can now do so much more and and it doesn't need to take up a lot of space Mm -hmm. like storage space I mean where it can be on your phone it can take up maybe less than a quarter of your phone storage mm-hmm. is dedicated, or a chip by itself is your AI chip within your phone. Yeah, as long, it basically is just going to come down as long as you've got that network connection. Mm-hmm. And even then, it's okay, well, I'm not connected to the network, but this is what I know. Yes. And it can learn as much as what it can do in that particular circumstance. Mm-hmm. And then until you get to a online or you get your Wi-Fi as it uploads to its other brain. <laughs> <laughs> the main brain. The main brain. <laughs> The hive. Yeah, the hive. <laughs> and, I mean, we look at, like, shows like Black Mirror. Mm-hmm. With, um, I, I, I think, I, I want to say back to the uh, the B episode. where Speaking about hive, where it's... Oh, all the bees, yes. Because yeah, yes, all the yes, bees yes. are gone, so they created these... Uh, robotic bees. AI robotic bees. Mm-hmm. And... It can be used in a bad way because... Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably not the best example, <laughs> but yeah. We, we retract that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's... it's any With anything, it can be good and bad. You can well, use a hammer. It's a very useful tool, but it can also be used for bad. I would actually argue that probably a better Black Mirror, I don't know the title of it, but a better Black Mirror episode for AI was the one where they were taking the consciousness of people and putting it into like a Google Home type device. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, that's actually a really good episode. I think I might have, because I started from like this past season, season four, I think it was, with the uh, Callister. It started uh, It's an episode that has John Hamm in it. Uh, I think I didn't. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay, it, you'll have to check that one out. That one's or, really or even better with the one with the uh, where her, uh, the fiance or husband died, and basically gathered all his like everything that he said, 
AI built a new oh, virtual a new him. person. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, spoilers if you haven't. Seen. <laughs> well, and that's why I wasn't going too far. Well, it's been a couple of years. I mean, it's kind of past that point. Of, like, <laughs> the stature of uh, spoilerism is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, past. and you gotta, you know, it, this is all loosey goosey, if you will, you know, because this is a TV show. But anyways, uh, the, in short, what happens without going through the ending? Ending. Uh, what happens is that they have a process where they basically implant something in your head. Okay. You go about your life for a period of time, two weeks, month, whatever, and it learns all of your kind of habits and okay. likes, and then they pull it out. And put it into like your Google Home, your Alexa, or whatever. And so when you wake up in the morning, your house temperature is set at your preference because it's literally based it's off you. of your yeah, yeah. your like. Um, you walk out and you get toast every morning, kind of thing. As soon as you walk into the kitchen, toast is popping out of the toaster, exactly cooked the way that you like. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Right. Um, and Black Mirror takes it a little, to take a little it to, they a little further to 11. than that. Yeah. yeah, in the fact that the the way they visualize it is it's actually like her in the device, like oh, it's yeah. going off the. So it's like she's like, "Oh my god, I'm trapped in here. What's going on?" He's like, "No, you're you're just you're just an AI. <laughs> like, look at camera number six, and you'll see yourself sleeping in bed. You know." And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> so they they take it to that extreme, but yeah. it still is AI There's that we p- could theoretically we can probably do something get to that, that yeah. point. Yes, absolutely, with it learning and uh, evolving that the way that it is, mm-hmm. and then tying that in with a human brain and being able to you know function off of but that will take a little bit longer that part yeah about five ten years <laughs> you, you know what the way things have been going who yeah. knows now go from ai we're actually going to 3d printing mm-hmm. there's a lot of interesting uh, 3d printing kind of started out as an expensive hobbyist type of thing with plastics and all that and yes. the machines were kind of not the greatest when they and first they came up very and they're very expensive yeah and, and big too yeah oh, they yeah, have big. the room for it it's almost like we're going through the same process with like CPUs and like memory. Everything, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's definitely come quite a ways, and this isn't for home use yet. Yet, yet. Asterisk. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always read the fine print. Um, but they are currently, as in this last year or two roughly have uh come out with a metal 3d printing okay um and it's it is full-fledged it's not cnc type 3d printing yeah. which a lot of people would tend to think that's what of. they would think yeah they, but oh, this, you make this piece of metal you shave whatever you want correct no this is actual metal 3d printing that they're doing uh which means that they can create more complex shapes mm-hmm. Mm, excuse me, uh, than what they can with, you know, your CNC uh, type machine. Um, so what's nice about that is that can actually change uh, manufacturing and warehousing and distributing uh, exponentially because now instead of, we'll just go automotive, it's kind of an easy one to deal with. Yeah, because you do a large scale, something like that with automotive. It's- Correct. Uh, so now instead of a manufacturer, you know, we can even just use, you know, Ford, Chevy, you know, any of the actual car manufacturers instead of them having to have a warehouse Mm -hmm. of parts for all the makes and models of their cars going back however many years they go and all their changes that they go through for the most part they have to have some form of stock to keep their their stores yeah uh to keep the cars running and on the road because that's part of their their i think it's legally they have to have so many years of available parts for cars that they sold i think it's let's say 10 years or let's say 20 years of parts that you have to have on hand in case you know somebody's car breaks down. I need a widget for widget A for this. Mm-hmm. Okay, it'll take two weeks to come from the warehouse, but here you yeah, go. Yeah, they've got it. Yeah. Um, so now the nice part about it is they can now scale down the size of what they actually keep on hand because they don't need a warehousing. Correct. So they could keep kind of the more uh, uh, like the one part that fits five types of vehicles. Mm-hmm. That is more commonly replaced, you know, something along those lines. Uh, you know, we could do something like, uh, you know, brakes. Yeah. You know, something that's kind of replaced. Yeah, you're getting your brake pads. You're, yeah. You're, uh, shoes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, now they can, you know, 
create a stock of those items so it's a more expedited turnaround, but you need something that's a little more rare. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a CV axle, let's say, it's a little rarer that something like that gets replaced without going true, you know, off-roading aftermarket or sport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like a normal everyday people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in a situation like that, they can then 3D, you know, metal 3D print this axle and ship it off. And as we know, 3D printing is very quick compared oh, yeah. to actual manufacturing. Nowadays. Because with manufacturing, you have your raw material. You have it's basically you're not at your Ford plant. You're not uh, smelting, or the correct term I think is smelting. I probably could be wrong, which I know I am. I know smelting has to do with metal and melting it yeah. down. <laughs> metal or G or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Alchemy. <laughs> but they have another, they're, they get it from a third party that makes this, this stuff, their ingots and all that sorts of stuff. Ship it to four plant that makes, presses the, the sheet metal into whatever they, they need. Mm-hmm. That which can go is they have to store. And yeah. But 3D printing is basically, well, let's, we need a new door for a, 2017 Mustang. Okay. Give us... uh, We'll have it to you tomorrow. Well, and that's the nice part about it is uh, now, not only does that work kind of date forward, Mm -hmm. but it also is retro. It can take your older, more classic cars that it's really hard to find good parts that aren't beat up or rusted or, you know, whatever. Pick and and pull lots. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And... 3D print out a new whatever you need. You know, back then a lot of everything was steel on the car, so you could do body panels to you know everything. And then you can actually do lighter materials, like do carbon fiber or do yeah. something because this does not necessarily have to be steel or any kind of type of metal. It can probably go for like I said, carbon fiber or aluminum or. Yeah, I mean, very, very possibly. You're looking at your let's say what 1950 Pontiac or Buick. And that's all like solid, not solid steel, but it's a heavy vehicle for what it is. You change out the material to aluminum, much lighter, with the same engine, and you have a go fast machine. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not carrying around four or five thousand pounds of weight just in the body itself. And the nice part about it is that the uh, printers for it are actually, I mean, the, for you and me, Way not, out of our price range. Yeah, we're not going to have it in our garage. <laughs> <laughs> but for your businesses, um, I think I, I saw somewhere in here that the uh, the fir- the uh, uh, the first three D metal printer uh, that was released. Um, this was actually back in twenty seventeen. Uh, was under a hundred thousand. Oh, so, pocket change. Well, I mean, <laughs> for being the you know the newest thing mm-hmm. out there, that's actually relatively a good price. I'll, t- I'll take two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just go refinance my house real quick. <laughs> Houses. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what. We're, yeah. That's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they're they're doing stainless steel. They're they're doing a lot of that, and mm-hmm. it is. Strong Stronger than current produced steel. Yeah, because a lot steel. of because what we do is pressing uh, molten metal pretty much into a form or shape, mm-hmm. and there are where it can incur stress fractures or microscopic fractures from that process because you're taking something that is in a cube form and squeezing and pressing it with tons of force, or even. Or even you see it more with aluminum, but they do do it with stainless steel where you're taking a, a flat sheet mm-hmm. and then you're pressing it into these weird complex yeah, shapes. Yeah, like uh, door panels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it absolutely can cause, you know, small issues. Uh, they're saying here that uh, researchers announced uh, that they had developed a 3D printing method for creating stainless steel parts twice as strong as traditionally made ones. No. So, I mean, that's what well, not only is it. Uh, faster and easier, but the fact that it's increasing the tensile strength of the mm-hmm. product means that our current conceptions of the strength, you know, of how things handle, well, now that changes. Yeah, because now you have to totally re engineer like crumple zones and mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. Because if you just take a one to one ratio from like a uh, press and steel to a 3D printed, they're not really going to react the same way because it's a different. Because it looks, it looks, it probably looks the same, but it, the way it's built yeah. is completely different. So, I don't know if they had to do like a honeycomb 
wafering or whatever. I guess it process. depends how they, they print yeah. it. They could probably print it in a couple of different ways depending on what's to make needed. it stronger. But then also you're going back to where, you know, the nineteen fifties, those cars when they get in a wreck, well, you turn into jelly because it's not <laughs> it's staying it's in a shape. <laughs> you're going to be flying into your mom and dad up in the front seat because you don't have seatbelts. Well, I mean, to be fair, you were laying on the back window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he he's, he can wake up and uh, no, no, dust right off. Yeah, <laughs> walk it be, off. <laughs> yeah, walk it off, kid. Life's hard. Walk it off. <laughs> um, I mean, on top of the the metal printing, they are also, um, and I, we believe they this is within the past couple of years but last year i believe they started actually making them a little bit more feasible mm -hmm. uh but they were 3d printing homes which is big thing yeah this I mean, is you take your small 3d printer that you're basically making funko pops with <laughs> and you can make a house <laughs> yeah it's definitely Not out of plastic but yeah it's out of poured concrete mm -hmm. um so it is a concrete home uh there are, as we were talking earlier, they don't quite have like your angles. Like you don't have your rectangles. You don't have your chamfered edges and yeah. <laughs> chamfered edges. I'm sorry, uh, but it isn't quite as I joked about earlier. It, it's it's not a yurt. <laughs> You're not living in a circle. Well, you could if you want to. I mean, yes, absolutely. You're printing it. You can make it whatever you want. Um, <laughs> but it is when it gets to what would traditionally be the corner of a room or a house, it's just more curved, Yeah. but it's a slight curve. They've gotten it to that point. Uh, when it first came out, there it was more sweeping, big, long curves. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they refined the process. Yes. Going through the different ways. And the big thing, as we were talking before starting the, uh, the show, is taking this technology and adding it or not adding it but bringing it to like uh, developing nations and mm -hmm. where a lot of people they don't have enough money or or no money whatsoever and they're basically living in a shanty or a cardboard box so full of stuff wherever they could find and mm -hmm. wherever they are at. Oh, yeah. I mean we were talking about you know uh, the homeless you know situation mm -hmm. uh, you know just your everyday homeless your homeless vets like all of them uh, I believe uh, Josh found an article uh, earlier that was talking about a. It, it's a tiny home, um, like it, yeah, it I falls under the category. Square footage it is, uh, but it was a home that was built for either at or just under ten thousand dollars. Yeah, it's the model is six hundred fifty square feet and consists of a living room, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, and a shaded porch. It went to finish within twenty four hours, and it cost less than ten thousand dollars. Which is, I mean, it's Which is pocket huge. change. It really is. Like, it, yes, it's a lot of money, but at the same time, it's not a lot of money. No, especially with the housing market. That's probably larger than the most New York City apartments. <laughs> <laughs> Depending. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, a micro. <laughs> it's really, I mean, 650 square feet. That, I mean, yeah, I believe there are even apartments in this area that mm -hmm. fall, one bedroom apartments that fall into that area. And this is a freestanding home. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, it's... And it, it looks nice too. It does. Uh, we'll obviously we'll link you know to this. In the but show notes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's quite the nice uh, home. We were saying you know you could take something like that, and especially with military currently, just kind of use that as the as a set example. Um, you know, because it's all government funded and based, anyways. Yeah. They're always pouring money into it. Uh, it'd be very very easy to establish neighborhoods that are full of these 3D printed homes that way all veterans have a house yeah, they doesn't have mean they have to head. use it yeah but they if have they the find their, yeah if they find themselves in a situation that they are going to be homeless they could come here mm -hmm. you know what i mean and, and and it's not they can not just do i'm sure they can do different um designs i mean it's it's 3d oh, printing absolutely. i mean you can, they just can do whatever plug in a computer it. and you can do two story after you do this just move the machine up the level and then you got a two story house yeah absolutely uh, so i mean they can do so much with it but it's base that we've seen right here on this one particular article. I'm sure there's plenty oh, more yeah. out there. You know, that there's so many options that you could very easily... I mean, even a city. You know what I mean? A city in itself. Take Tampa or Pinellas or, you know, whatever. I know Pinellas isn't a city. Um, oh. 
I mean, someone cl- classify it as because it's, it's a never ending. It's like, oh, we're uh, Clearwater. Okay, now we're Largo. Where, where, where's the changeover? I mean, I, we'll take it to an easier level. A state. You know what I mean? Like they could they could very easily put funding into their budget. And I say easy to make it seem like they're just sitting around with none of the. I know it would yeah. take. Well, now they're not doing anything. Well, well. to be fair, <laughs> hopefully, at the end, when you hear this, or <laughs> that'll change. <laughs> well, that'll be in a couple of days or tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I mean, you could put that in there. You know what I mean? I I don't know. To me, it seems like a very feasible thing, especially in areas where homelessness is a epidemic. You know, where there actually is quite a bit. This seems like something that could very easily, it's another tax, but it could be covered and taken care of within a year. Well, I'll take two. that, take your what you said, and not even have the government pay for anything. Have someone like Elon Musk or Bill Gates come in, you know, say, I'm going to pop down, let's say, $200 million for buying a section of land or whatnot. A building, tear it down, and put this up in its place at fractions of pennies of the dollar. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's actually doable. Where building something, people will look. Okay, how, what's the time frame? We're looking at months, years, typical uh, times right now of building structures. Yes, and this can be done. Just one building in, in one day, and that's just let's, using- let's say two days because you know the roof, electrical, and all that. And, well, yeah, okay. I mean, you let's, could say, let's say add, two days from one building. Let's just even say a week, to be okay. perfectly honest with you. A week, start to finish, because a day for the building, and then five, you know six days for everything else. Yeah. Um, that's just one 3D printer. Then you got a whole section of all, let's say, four, let's say 15 of these going at one time. Yeah, that's just it. So in a week, you have 15 units going up. Now you go by the two weeks... Now you got 30. Yeah. I mean, it just, it keeps, it just keeps going, you know, Mm -hmm. and you can spend an entire week just printing a bunch of homes and then the rest of it is set out to do all the electrical, all the, you know, all that stuff while the rest of the homes are being printed. You know what I mean? Like you could just daisy chain it and just keep going. Like it's, it's it's, it's better construction than what we're seeing in our, our area. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's also the same in your area where all these Developments are going up pretty quickly, mm-hmm. but those are normal construction of uh, first floor is cinder block and top floor is if maybe you're lucky. Yeah, if you're lucky, or it could be all <laughs> wood construction. Yeah, and they're going up within what a month, two months, and you're thinking, okay, what am I going to have to deal with down the line? <laughs> well, okay, it starts settling or anything. This is a concrete building, a house. That is probably stronger, more probably hurricane proof to a certain point, depending on how the how it's done, or whatever absolutely. the materials that they're using in yeah. the concrete. Well, and the fact that it's as we've talked about the fact that it's actually three D printed, you mm-hmm. can choose how the wall itself is printed. So you could do your honeycomb, as we yeah. used as an example, type structure to give it some more stability. You could do just a standard flat. I think this up. also had a honey or is not. This is like a honeycomb where it's like a cardboard where it zigzags. zigzags. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why I looked at the video. It was zigzagging. So it has that reinforcement of, of honeycombing mm-hmm. uh, as a reinforcement base within the walls itself. So no nice. rebar, no nothing. Correct. So, I mean, there is so much that could be done with this. And I, I, what blows me away and the reason that I'm, I kind of got passionate about it is the fact that it, 10 grand. Like that's it's yeah. really not ten grand. You're starting at um, look at let's just say not even a cost of land itself. Yeah, most most of the times it's the average of say thirty to fifty grand. That's for your land. Mm-hmm. And that's not including your house, infrastructure, power, anything like that. That's ten grand. Here's your house. Well, I mean, actually, <laughs> it, kind of going and joking about the, the the government shutdown and all that. There was the the crowdfunding of the wall. Oh, yeah. Where they raised all that money just from your standard Americans. A couple hundred million dollars for... It was more than that. It was like in the billions, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Or at least that's what the goal was, I think. Yeah, it was was being refunded because uh, GoFundMe is like, yeah, we're not going (laughs) to... But, I mean, if you think about it, 
why not do this? Yeah, instead of building I'm walls, fine. people, let's build houses. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, without getting into the politics side of this whole thing. America. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like, it, that is something that is very, very feasible. Yeah. It's very easy to handle and do. Um, I mean, you can have a community come together, do uh, baking, I don't want to say cook-offs, but... Oh, I'm blanking. Girl on. Scout cookies. Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Which is coming up. <laughs> but it's just small little things that you can come up. And 10 grand is easy to come with. And when yeah. people like, here's a dollar, here's five, here's 20, here's a hundred. Oh, then that's just it. It doesn't matter how much you give. It's the mass amount of people that's yeah. giving. That's you, your volume is coming in. Yeah. And easily can achieve one or more of I mean, these. It, I don't know the exact numbers, but I mean, you look at how many Americans there are living in the United States if everyone, that are homeless. And, well, just in general, the amount of oh, Americans yeah. living in the United States, if everyone gave a dollar, mm -hmm. very easy for everyone. I mean, you're paying two, three dollars for your cup of coffee at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> or again, going back to taxes, yep. uh, you're paying out hundreds in taxes, unfortunately. We yeah. all hate it. You know what I mean? Like, it's very easy that you, know, you could do something <laughs> like that. Um, so, I mean, it's obviously we're not trying to create an upheaval here or it's just that call to action. <laughs> we're getting to a point with technology and manufacturing and development that some of these problems that we're experiencing in this world can be solved. Yeah. And I, I want to cut off and just say, I can, I already know some people are probably saying, well, what about the jobs? If we, all the machines are doing this, what are we going to be doing? <laughs> Well, you know what? You're going to be out there fixing the machines and doing stuff. <laughs> so there's no reason to worry about that. <laughs> I, you know, it, we've I know we've talked about this a couple times on this show. <laughs> it I get it, but it drives me nuts. The whole reason that people are worried about jobs is because they're worried about their financial stability and being mm -hmm. able to pay for things. But if everything just runs, there's nothing to yeah, it's like it's, it's the uh, Star Trek uh, future. Yeah, you don't I mean, have to work. You don't have to worry about money. It's just it's stuff. utopia esque. It is. Yeah. T but, Earl Grey hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you can't logically get there. No. Like it, well, what it does, it takes. Th this is just blowing everything out of water it's just going off hold on a tangent it's basically instead of having to worry about your nine to five or what how i'm going to pay for x you're going actually you're free to do your whatever you want to do your imagination is now truly unlocked mm -hmm. to do oh i want to take a painting well before it's like well i want to take a painting but i gotta fit it in between 6 30 and 7 30 <laughs> i have to go to sleep and then i have to wake up for work now you're like Oh, I wake up at 11. You know, some people are actually still are actually doing this right now, but mm -hmm. the general population is locked into this nine to five rat race and mm -hmm. we're, we're in it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some things I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to do what I want to do. Yeah. But in bills and <laughs> yeah, you, all the responsibilities that, that comes and kick it to your butt. You're like, Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But I mean, it's all... I had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, and to be perfectly honest with you, where where our future could very easily go in regards to the jobs is it's not the physical side, mm -hmm. but it's the side, uh, kind of what we were talking about earlier, where your job is no longer something that you have to lift box A, move to box B. It's more... The creative, the mm -hmm. thinking, the part that the machines can't do yet. Yeah. That they can get there, but they still, you know, you still might need that human interaction. Think of your articles, your web, everything that you're experiencing and you're looking at online and that you're taking in. Yes, machines can do that, but it doesn't, it's not there yet. No, so you're, it's you're very infantile, I want to say, mm -hmm. where there is, 
the machines are at an infant stage of learning and doing and being creative. Yeah, it's they're uh, basically just finger painting. Yeah. <laughs> All this is gonna you know take time, but that doesn't mean that they can't get there. And it doesn't, and it doesn't mean, mean that your uh, humanity is doomed. Correct, and we shouldn't. <laughs> We shouldn't stray away from it just because of a potential what if. Yeah. There are so many what ifs. This That's... Every morning you we wake can talk up. About yeah. <laughs> Every morning you wake up, your life is full of what ifs. Yeah. <laughs> what if I stayed in? Or, oh, it's, so, it's cold out. But the comfiness in this bed is... <laughs> what if I stayed in? Or what if I had to go out? <laughs> I mean, there's... There, it's just everything, 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 everything that you take. I, honestly, everything that you do, you don't have to do. Like, so you look at it and be like, "Well, no, I have to shower. I have to brush my teeth." No, you technically don't. Yes, you will deal with the ramifications yeah. of it, but you do have that choice. So your world is full of what ifs. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you're sleeping, there's what ifs. <laughs> but. They could fully go on back into our, t- <laughs> our show. <laughs> like a real, I was going to reel our back in. <laughs> well, I mean, we're coming up to the end anyways. I mean, that was a good portion to end it on. It's a uh, philosophical type of uh, leaning. <laughs> but it's kind of awesome to look about how 2018 came about and how everything There was a lot that gelled. got overshowered. Over, overshadowed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I died. died. <laughs> there was a lot that got overshadowed. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can possibly go over every little thing or even every big thing that happened. Well, and there's stuff that probably happened that we haven't even heard about yet yeah. because it just hasn't been made public because there's still, you know, or we're looking fluke? In the wrong, can we do it again? You know, yeah, no, we're looking in the wrong circles and it's just like, I mean, yeah. it's just, <laughs> this stuff is out there. But if you have anything that you thought of that could have been that we didn't talk about that could have been like a big... I'm not going to say game changer, but something that happened in the world of 2018 that you thought, hey, that's pretty interesting. Let us know. Absolutely. Or if you want to add to our philosophical rants, yeah. by all means, I'm always good for an <laughs> argument on that side. <laughs> oh, it's, that, that's the most fun thing is when you can have a great discussion about that. Exactly. And you don't have to come to blows because... <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's half the fun is the different viewpoints. Yeah. If everyone because thought the same, we'd make no progress. I'm wrong in a lot of things. I'm right in a few things. Same thing with Joe. And <laughs> it depends I, if you ask our wives or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward pause. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to get, uh, let us know if anything, you can look us up on Twitter uh, Facebook, our Facebook page, everything like that. Email, or if you see us on the street, pull us aside. Don't be gentle, though. I, I would be surprised if someone pulled us aside. Well, now that you said it, someone will. <laughs> Joe, come here. <laughs> Take How alley. do you know who I am? Who do you work for? <laughs> so yeah, thank you for listening. This is our look back at 2018. I know it's a, a month behind, but. We were this for January. We're doing like a BOGO. We're doing this month and then January's episode. <laughs> we wanted to make sure we got a really good look at the look behind. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it within, you know, dealing with Christmas and, and New Year's and stuff. There's just ain't nobody got time for that. I just, uh, I don't know what happened in December, but man, the sickness is just, yeah, went rampant. <laughs> it's, it, it went through everything, everyone, everybody. Oh my God, it was nuts. But thank you for listening. <laughs> it should have been in our look behind. Yeah. <laughs> the health of the 2018. How healthy were you in 2018? Yeah. How many sick days did you take? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so thank you for listening to the Geek 2.0 podcast. I'm Joe. No. You're Josh. See? <laughs> wow. That is Josh. I am Joe. <laughs> I was going to stop right now. Okay. All right. We'll see you on the next one. (laughs) Thanks for listening to this episode of Geek 2.0 Podcast. Be sure to check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash geek 2.0 podcast. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter at geek 20 podcast. Don't forget to visit our website at geek20podcast.com for older episodes, news, and much more. 
and make sure to subscribe to our podcast through your favorite podcatcher player of choice. The Geek 2.0 Podcast is part of the Collective Network.